right behind the shoulder. Good shot. I hit. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got him. <laughs> <laughs> Golden, you got him. He's on the ground. <laughs> Look at him. He's on the ground. <coughs> you got him. Oh, yes. <laughs> So for most people, when they think of uh, legacy, they're thinking of continuing a legacy that their father or maybe grandfather uh, instilled in their family and, and brought in. For me, hunting was uh, something that I would have to start in my family. Now, my father and grandfathers uh, did hunt. Uh, I just didn't have an opportunity to do that with them when I was a kid. Uh, so when I got into the firearm industry and started hunting myself, I knew that it was something that I wanted to do with my kids. Several years ago, when the kids were very small, I took them hunting over in eastern Montana, and we hiked for many miles and wound up uh, shooting a nice mule deer. Uh, but the truth of that is, I was on YouTube the night before uh, looking at how to field dress a deer. I didn't actually know how to actually do it. And um, I'm not ashamed to say that. I, I, I tell people that, I don't brag about it, but I tell people that because I want them to understand that um, hunting can be uh, an intimidating thing when you think about getting into it because like what do I, how do I do this? Most people don't even know how to mount a scope on a rifle let alone uh, zero it and successfully get an animal on the ground and then of course uh, field dress it. When Colton uh, got to an age where it was like okay he's going to be able to handle the rifle on his own and hunt, we decided to head up to the wilds of Montana uh, opening weekend and see if we could uh, find a deer or an elk. And in Montana, what a lot of people don't realize, it's a lot different than hunting down in Texas, where we also do a lot of hunting. In Montana, you're, you're gonna hike several miles. Uh, you need to be prepared with gear and for any type of weather. And of course, uh, we have uh, grizzly bears, in particular the area that we're hunting near Canada. My, my daughter was adamant this year after getting her deer, her first deer last year, she was adamant this year that she wanted to hunt in Montana on foot, hiking and, and doing all that stuff. And, and so we did it. We couldn't get the deal done, so I wound up booking a flight for my son, and he came with me on one of my trips down to um, Texas, and uh, we completed his his uh, journey there. So for the trip, I actually built two rifles uh, for Colton. One was uh, for the deer, a six millimeter Creedmoor. Uh, it was uh, Alpha NAR uh, chassis, Falcor 7 action, Helix 6 precision, uh, carbon fiber barrel, AB suppressor, trigger tech trigger, and a Leupold um, optic. Now the rifle itself that we used from the blind, very, uh, you know, about a 12 pound rifle, not ideal to be walking around with, but because we were hunting from a blind, uh, I put that together because it just, it settles down faster, it, it, sits, a, it sits very uh, firm, you don't get a lot of movement when you're breathing or you're excited. Um, so that was the deer rifle that I built, and I also built a, a uh, AR uh, for him for this trip, which was a next level uh, elite uh, match precision set. Again, a Helix 6 Precision uh, 223 Wild Barrel, um, and uh, we had an Armasite uh, contractor uh, thermal on top of that one because we knew we were going to be doing a lot of varmiting as well. Colton had two objectives on this trip. He, he really wanted to get a deer, and if he got the deer early enough, he wanted to also get a Javelina. Um, he shot hogs before on previous trips. And that's a whole nother experience when you do uh, thermal and night vision hunting. And guys out there that have hunted for years go out and try and thermal hunt and night vision. It's a completely different environment. 
and he's had success doing that. So I built a, a rifle for him for this trip. That's on the dot. Is it on the dot? Yep. You wanna look? Right on the dot? Right on it. My name is Colton Walker and I'm from Kalispell, Montana. I'm most looking forward to getting my first buck. Uh, I think it's gonna be an awesome experience. My sister got one and she said it was amazing. So I'm looking forward to that the most. You know, for him, of course, you know, he's young and he wanted to outdo his, his sister. Uh, he wanted to get a bigger buck than what she got last year. He was, he was very prepared mentally. He, he knew what he wanted to do. He's uh, fairly proficient with the firearm. And we, we went out and, and uh, got into the blind. So yesterday was opening day. We got into the blind, we sat there for maybe 30 minutes and started seeing deer. Right down this road, there was a big buck there. He was kind of like, he was skinny, but really big antlers. So finally, he looks away, he turns broadside, and we're like, okay, he's 180. When Colton shot, uh, we were all excited. It looked like a hit. The, the deer bucked like a deer will when it's a heart shot sometimes. And we high-fived and celebrated and uh, got out of the blind and looked around and could not find blood anywhere. Uh, it was incredibly uh, disappointing uh, for, for me, but for my son, he was pretty devastated. When I took my shot, I wasn't thinking about him being at 180. I was thinking, I'll just put it right on him. And the bullet ducked right below him because we didn't dial or anything. So it ducked right below him and I was just crushed. Like, I, I don't know what to say about it. It just felt terrible. We decided to go back to the drawing board. Uh, Colton was, was pretty rattled over it. So we spent that afternoon and early the next day just uh, going through the fundamentals again of uh, precision shooting, uh, practicing his, his breathing, his trigger control, focusing on that area of the target, and uh, really getting him to, to think smaller when he was uh, on the target shooting. So today's Sunday, we get up, we get into the blind, and I'm just, I just really need to get my deer. So we sit there for maybe 15 minutes and we just start seeing like 12 deer coming into the road. Eight of them are bucks. So we're like, okay, let's get this set up and pick one out. So we see this deer and he's just exactly what I'm looking for. He's like a, he has perfect, perfectly symmetrical form, or antlers and uh, they're really thick. He's a good sized deer, lots of meat. Yeah, we're just waiting there for like, I don't know, 20 minutes, waiting for all these other deer to get out of his way so we can get a clean shot. When they finally do, I'm just shaking all over the place, so I'm like, I can't take this shot right now. So we wait like another 20 minutes before I actually shoot, and when I, when I shot and I heard it hit, I'm like losing my mind. I'm so excited. Yeah. You got him. <laughs> Colton, yes. you got him. He's on the ground. <laughs> Look at him. He's on the ground. You got him. Oh, yes. I heard that report. Uh, you know, that, that six millimeter Creed, I, I can't say enough good things about that particular caliber. It, it sounds like a loud pellet rifle uh, when it goes off, uh, in part because of that that uh, AB suppressor that we have on there, and you really hear the report when it hits when it hits the uh, target. And we did, and of course, you know, visually, you saw that deer uh, just hit the ground. And uh, I mean, you can hear an audible uh, laugh from him, and it was incredible. When I walked up to the deer, I was just ecstatic. I was super excited because it's my first deer. Can't do anything wow. but be excited. Yeah, 
I definitely beat Bo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my hopes for Colton in the future hunting, actually, uh, I'm seeing it right now. Uh, he's already talking about his next hunt, you know, what he wants to do next. Uh, so th both the kids are talking about hunting and, and doing more hunting from uh, wing shooting, duck shooting, uh, to varmints, to, to whatever. Um, for Colton, the way that it worked out on, on that hunt was he told me as we were flying down there, you know, Dad, had, you know, of course he really wanted to get a deer, but also really high on his list was getting a javelina. It was funny, immediately after, I mean, literally immediately after he shoots his deer, we're looking at the deer and he says, Dad, do you think we can get a javelina next? And I'm like, well, gee whiz, I'd like to see a unicorn tonight, but the chances of that are pretty slim. Uh, it just happened to work out that we went back to that blind uh, that evening. He said, Dad, I see, a, I see a javelina in the woods. Now with a the thermal, you can actually see through trees and you can see animals. For me, and for most people, it's very difficult to distinguish the difference between a pig and a javelina, but he was certain that it was javelina. Of course, I'm like, well, he wants it to be, so that's why he thinks it's a javelina. Um, even with the binoculars, I couldn't really see until the thing stepped out of the road, and, and sure enough, it was actually a javelina. And, uh, and he shot it, and literally, uh, almost exactly the same spot that he shot his deer. Um, that, that evening. So he got his javelina and his deer on uh, within the same day. And subsequently we woke up at about four the next morning and went duck hunting and he got one of his first ducks ever as well. So it turned out to be quite an epic uh, hunting trip for Colton, uh, none of which would have ever happened if I didn't have friends like Darren Jones and, and Leroy Gonzalez to, to uh, make sure that we were having a good experience out there. So it was, it was epic. Again, there's a lot of emphasis right now on the rifle that we used and the places that we went and so on. What I don't want to lose sight of and what I, what I want the most important thing, the most important underlying message of this uh, to be is you don't have to, first of all, you don't have to grow up hunting and fishing to two out and start hunting and fishing as an adult. Um, and you don't have to grow up hunting and fishing or, or hunt and fish uh, as an adult to start teaching your kids. You can learn together. So a legacy, the most important aspect of this is that a legacy begins with you. And, and in my mind, I knew that the legacy was going to begin for me, uh, from me for my, for my children. That's where that legacy was going to begin. And I know that from the experiences that we've had, both positive and negative, they've not always been winners, We've had some tough uh, situations when we've been out uh, hunting here in Montana and also uh, elsewhere that all collectively work to build character and uh, instill in the kids the concept of winning and losing and how to deal with it. So it's much more, it's much bigger than just getting an animal on the ground. And in today, Today in particular, with all the stuff going around, with shortages taking place from COVID and, and all these different things we've had to deal with, self-sufficiency, self-sustaining, the ability to know that if there's nothing in the meat market, and we've all experienced going to the store now and seeing shortages, that they could go out and take care of themselves. That is the legacy that I'm trying to instill in my kids.